two Fridays ago, Lucy uh, Lucy uh, Kemp, the governor's daughter, lost her boyfriend in a car crash. His name was Harrison Deal. He was killed in a car crash. He was on his way to do advance work for a rally for Vice President Pence. He was killed on the interstate in Pooler, Georgia, in a multi-car crash. He worked for Senator Leffler. He dated the governor's daughter and conspiracy theorists who believe the election in Georgia was stolen have been harassing the governor's daughter, claiming, among other things, that her father, the governor, murdered Harrison Deal, had him killed because the kid probably knew something about the stolen election. They are sending mocking pictures over the internet, mocking this young man's death, peddling conspiracy theories about the governor. The governor and his family are getting death threats. Someone set up a website that had a a target on the governor's head and showed their pictures of their personal house, not the governor's mansion, their personal house and a satellite view of its location so people could figure out how to navigate the property. Gave his personal, private home phone number, cell phone number, contact information. Leaked all of that. Sending him death threats. Wanting him and his family killed on the fraudulent belief that he stole the election for China. There are people who have called this program who are convinced that the governor of Georgia stole the election, worked with Stacey Abrams to steal the election for China. There are crazy people out there. There are crazy, crazy people out there. And they're all coming out of the woodwork after this governor, after Kelly Leffler, after David Perdue, most particularly after the governor and Brad Raffensperger. This is this is happening. And Lynn Wood and Sidney Powell and their crazy cracking conspiracy kookiness have emboldened the crazy people to come out. Lynn Wood, the lawyer, is clearly nuts. The man is now peddling conspiracy theories, trying to tie John Roberts, the Chief Justice of the United States, to Jeffrey Epstein. There was apparently a John Roberts who uh, did something with Jeffrey Epstein. It has been thoroughly debunked that it was uh, the John Roberts of the Supreme Court. And you know how? Because uh, the, the proof that John Roberts and Jeffrey Epstein are connected belongs on a flight manifest that shows John Roberts was on Jeffrey Epstein's plane uh, headed to Jeffrey Epstein's Orgy Island or whatever people are calling it. But it turns out that the John Roberts of the United States Supreme Court was actually on the bench in, at arguments for the Supreme Court. Couldn't have been him. Wasn't him. But the conspiracy theorists don't want to be persuaded otherwise. On a daily basis, I get videos from people still trying to convince me the election in Georgia was stolen. Still trying to convince me that no one should go vote because the election was stolen. Still trying to convince me that, yes, Brian Kemp knew something about the election being stolen and chose not to act. And the result of this is that his daughter is getting mocking emails and mail about her boyfriend dying in a car wreck, suggesting that her father is the killer. The governor and his wife are getting death threats. The Secretary of State of Georgia has to walk around with a bulletproof vest on. His family can't go out in public. His wife is getting text messages. Someone gave out their phone numbers. Someone, I'm sure, who at one point was close to him until driven crazy by the election, gave out their phone numbers. His wife is getting uh, explicit messages about how she's going to be raped and then murdered. And no, it's not the Chinese doing it, and no, it's not the Russians doing it. It's crazy campaign activists who have decided to believe the lie. This is nuts, and it needs to stop. The election in Georgia was not stolen, and I'm sorry that you believe it was stolen. I'm sorry you've been lied to about what happened in Fulton County. I'm sorry you've been lied to about the data in Georgia. I'm sorry you've been lied to about how the voting machines work in Georgia. I'm sorry you were lied to about how the voting 
count happened in Georgia. I'm sorry you were lied to about the signature verifications in Georgia. I'm sorry you were lied to about the absentee balloting checks in Georgia. I'm sorry you were lied to about all these things, but you were lied to. You have been lied to repeatedly. You've been lied to by Republicans who want to discredit the election because they want to do to Joe Biden what the Democrats did to Donald Trump. They believe payback is all well and good, and they have incited crazy across the country. But you've been lied to repeatedly by these activists trying to show you distorted videos or misinterpreted videos, misinterpreted data, bad data, wrong data, frivolous data, out-of-date data. My favorite is the guy who said that there were 96,600 absentee ballots that were counted in Georgia and counties did not put them officially in their county rolls, so we can't go find them. No, there were 96,600 canceled absentee ballots. He saw the C and thought it meant counted. No, the C meant canceled. If you knew Georgia election procedure, you would know this, but this guy didn't. This is the same guy who counted Minnesota precincts as uh, Michigan precincts and presumed that Michigan precincts were stolen with 100% plus turnout when it was actually precincts in Minnesota. And by the way, all but two of them went for Donald Trump. The crazies should not be dictating the terms of this election, and yet they are. I've got friends of mine who are mad at me because I refuse to go down the rabbit hole. But you know why I'm not? It's because of this sort of stuff. It's because it's unhealthy mentally to go down the rabbit hole to try to engage with this stuff and spark crazy. The crazy people who are sending pictures and and the like to the governor and his family over the loss of a uh, daughter's boyfriend claiming the governor murdered the guy. The election in Georgia was not stolen. The Democrats outperformed the Republicans to the extent that the Republicans are suggesting the race was stolen in Georgia. Do you know why? It's because the party dropped the ball and the party doesn't want to accept responsibility. So the party is throwing their own Republican governor and secretary of state under the bus, hoping that the mob comes for them last. The Republican Party of Georgia could have participated in signature verifications before the election and didn't. The Republican Party of Georgia could have participated in throwing out absentee ballots and doing challenges of absentee ballots before the election. They didn't. Georgia law allows them to. The Secretary of State's office told them they could. And now they're like, oh, no, we were shut out of the process. No, you weren't shut out of the process. And now you're concocting crazy conspiracy theories to abdicate blame on yourself and pass the buck to someone else. And you have inspired crazy. The president's team has inspired crazy. The race in Georgia was not stolen. The Democrats just did better than you did. And remarkably, just how well did the Democrats do? They only beat the president by 11,700 some odd votes and then lost everything else. So now the crazies are having to tell you don't go vote. Because if you do go vote and Leffler and Purdue win, it exposes that there was no theft in the general election. Because how could the Democrats steal the presidency but then not steal the United States Senate? Literally, the only way the stolen election theory works is if you they convince you not to go vote and the Democrats win. Then they say, aha, see, the Democrats, they just keep stealing it. If you go vote in January, you go vote now. If you text data to 33777 and get your absentee ballot to you now, if you do that now and you vote and the Republicans win, it becomes really hard to maintain the mythology that the election was stolen. I have friends of mine who are absolutely epistemically convinced the election was stolen by the Democrats and Stacey Abrams' organization. They have no proof, just a surge of absentee ballots. Never mind that Joe Biden was telling people to go vote by absentee ballot and Donald Trump was telling people not to vote by absentee ballot. There were just so many of them. They must have sold it. They must have done something wrong. No, they campaigned better than the GOP in Georgia. By misinterpreting what's happening, in addition to inspiring crazy people, Republicans are going to keep dropping the ball in Georgia and the Democrats really are going to take over because you've believed it was theft when it was actually out-organization. The Republicans got out-organized by the Democrats in Georgia. But there's hope in this election because right now the Republicans are out-organizing the Democrats. They're using in-state volunteers, not out-of-state volunteers. They're using in-state phone calls and postcard writers, not out-of-state people. They're using college kids from Georgia and Georgia Tech and Mercer and and Georgia State and Georgia College and uh, Georgia Southern knocking on doors while the Democrats are using people from New York and Illinois and California and Florida and you name it. If you vote, there are more Republicans in the state than there are Democrats. But part of this requires that you understand the race was not stolen. 
part of this requires you, if you can't accept it wasn't stolen, to accept that if you flood the zone with your votes, it's going to make it harder for them to steal. Or maybe you'll be able to expose how they stole it. Maybe you'll be able to expose it if you really believe they stole it, if you vote in overwhelming numbers. But crazy has been inspired, and, and we need to push back on the crazy. I don't care whether the governor of the state is a Republican or a Democrat. No one deserves to be targeted for the murder of his daughter's boyfriend because of some co- co- crazy, crazy conspiracy theories on the Internet. No daughter of any politician should be harassed because her boyfriend was killed in a car wreck. That's what's going on. You got to stand up to this stuff. You got to stand up to crazy. You got to tell your friends, really, there's a sphere in life for politics and it's not the biggest one. But the number one thing you can do to make this all start going away is you can go vote. I really actually do mean that. Seriously, go vote. If you go vote and it's not close, it exposes how the general wasn't stolen, just the Democrats out organized. And it's now our turn, our time to get out there and go vote. 